Hey, welcome to part two of this resource that looks at understanding the Pythagoras theorem and helping engineering learners really master this content. There are three parts to part two. The first one is getting hands on. That is giving your learners things that they can experiment with and play with to develop a real conceptual understanding of what the Pythagoras theorem is. Number two is the maths. How do you actually communicate the idea of the Pythagoras theorem to learners? Number three is application. That is making links for the learner. So the learners are able to take their knowledge of the Pythagoras theorem and apply it to a range of problems. Now, if you remember in the last resource, we showed the learners some pictures and we asked them to identify the triangles on it. This next exercise builds on that and now we're gonna shine a grid onto the whiteboard. After looking at the pictures and discussing the triangle, what I've taken to doing is handing out a grid to the learners or I've used a data projector to shine a grid up onto the whiteboard and I've simply drawn a triangle and I've stuck to the three and the four sided triangle just to keep things simple for the learners at this time. So again, we're keeping it concrete. We're not introducing the abstract side yet. So I haven't introduced a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Just talking about the basics of the theorem itself. And I try to put it in as simpler terms as possible. Now, just one thing before we go ahead, the learners at this point should have a good understanding of what a squared number is. And there's resources for that available as well. Some good ideas about developing those if learners are not aware of what a squared number is and uh, the conventions around that, then they can really get tripped up on this. Often they think the exponent is what they times a the number by, uh, but you can avoid all of that confusion just by running through a very quickly a resource around squaring numbers. But if that's in place, then I simply try to make this as easy as possible. And I say, look, the Pythagoras theorem simply says this. If you turn one side into a square, for example, if we take the side that has four squares, we square it, four squared equals 16, and we square the other side as well, three squared is nine, then the total area of those two squares will equal the hypotenuse squared. And I try to make it as simple as possible. Again, the squared hypotenuse is equal to the other two squares put together. And at this point, I'll hand out a cardboard cutout and I'll have learners prove that it is so. And those resources are available as well. And uh, you can just print those. Okay, you can here let the uh, learners cut them out themselves, or you can stay up in the evening and cut them out or bribe someone to cut them out. But they're well worth the time. You just can't beat letting your learners get hands-on with content. Now, what you see on the screen here is available as a PDF. And simply put, it's a diagram that when you cut out will help you prove to your learners the Pythagoras theorem. The idea is you hand out this sheet to your learners and they cut it out themselves. Now what we really want to do is we want to make the point that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this is where we really begin to introduce the mathematics. You get the learners to cut out each of the squares in a and b and then begin to place them onto the c squared. And the idea is that they fit perfectly. And so the learners are proving to themselves that a squared plus b squared really does equal c squared. So they don't have to take it just as a matter of authority or a matter of faith, but they can really see that it actually does work. It takes a while, but it's well worth it. And as you can see there, they do fit perfectly, and you really want your learners to discuss this, and talk about it with each other. So I have learners discuss that and talk about it. I also have them in like a peer share, explain to each other exactly what the Pythagoras theorem is and what it means and can they put it into their own words. Let this settle for a long time, because again, we're building that concrete understanding before we go to the abstract. The next step I take is to begin to make it more authentic. Now, this may not look like an authentic task, but actually it is. It's the outline of a supporting beam and a basement. And so I've often brought in uh, the real pictures to learners so they can get a look at it and then use this just to illustrate the maths and the problem. But I ask them again, you know, how would you work out if that beam, the cross beam there, is going to fit between those two points. And, uh, and a lot of them say, well, actually I asked them, how would you do it? How would you find out how far it is from those two points? The learners often say things like, well, I'd measure it. I'd get the measuring tape. I'd put it at one corner and go to the other and work out what it is. And I ask them whether they'd get somebody to hold the measuring tape at that end or, or exactly how they'd do it. And when they're finished explaining how they do it, uh, I give them this little talk. I say, hey, you guys are engineers. That's how most people would do it, but you're not most people, you're engineers. 
And as engineers, you're a little bit better than that. And you know secrets that uh, the general population don't. So let me tell you how an engineer would do it. An engineer would use the Pythagoras theorem exactly like we've been looking at. And they get that attention. I mean, they say, so, you know, as an engineer, you know that you can derive that measurement from the other measurements and you don't have to be mucking around with measuring tapes and so on. If we know that one side is four meters and we know that the other side is three meters, then what do we do? How do we apply the Pythagoras theorem to this? And, uh, and some classes, of course, will make the link immediately to the other material we've just been looking at. And for others, it won't be so immediate. So again, I hand out a uh, grid and I ask learners to trace it in. And we just talk through it again. Four meters, we'd square the four meters and that would give us 16. We'd square the three meters, that would give us nine. Add those two together and now we know what the hypotenuse would be if it was squared. And we just need to find the square root of that number. So in summary, in part one, we looked at the challenge of delivering the Pythagoras theorem to learners. And that was around ensuring that they had a concrete understanding of the theorem rather than just trying to grapple with the abstract. So before introducing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we really want to develop an understanding of what that means to them. Question raising, that was about presenting learners with questions and scenarios that would get them thinking about why the Pythagoras theorem might be useful and what the point of it is. And exploring triangles, that was about using real pictures and having learners identify the right angle triangles within them and begin to appreciate that as engineers, the right angle triangle is a wonderful tool and a really integral part of their profession. In part two, we looked at getting hands on and that was with the cardboard cutouts. And although that might seem like a lot of work to a tutor who's pretty time pressured, uh, those cutouts really do work and really help make the point that the square of those two sides of the two legs really does equal the square of the hypotenuse. So that learners can see that it's tactile and begin to get an understanding. And then introducing the maths, that is the formula, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, making sure they have a concrete understanding before they launch into that. And then applications. Lots of problem solving puzzles, lots of real problems, authentic tasks where they're applying the theorem to their work. Hey, we really hope this was useful and has stimulated some new ideas about how you might deliver this. Uh, remember, there's some additional resources on the website as well that can help. We wish you all the best.